Hello, my name is Anela. Hello, my name is Ilda, and we are scientists slash musicians from Bosnia and Herzegovina. <laughs> now, our country is a small, but a beautiful, beautiful country in the Balkans, Europe. It has all this potential for alternative fuels production and usage, and essentially for better lives of its people. But it doesn't have the economy to develop it. So this is where our endless teenage optimism <laughs> steps in. We thought, why can't girls from Bosnia solve this? And why can't Bosnia be a country of innovations and solutions? It certainly can. As two young students attending two high schools, International High School of Tuzla and Secretary Music School in Tuzla, who asked far too many questions on chemistry and biology classes, and who played with the chemicals when the teachers weren't looking, <laughs> we set on a path of changing the future of alternative energy. So we knew that nowadays people in Bosnia and other countries as well have these huge problems with maintaining enough energy for their normal life needs, finding new fuels, but also finding storage for them. So as a solution, we wanted to find just one matter, just one material, from which we could produce both. So a biofuel and a material that would store a biofuel. By using the internet, reading lots of scientific literature and books, which we couldn't understand in the beginning at all, <laughs> we found a material with amazing properties. We found chicken feathers. <laughs> <laughs> yes, many poultry plants produce chicken feather meal, which is a hydrolyzed poultry meal made from leftover feathers and other animal parts used for animal diets. The plants usually extract 6 to 12 percent of oil from which, for example, biodiesel could be made. Moreover, feathers are an important source of keratin protein, which has this unique feature of a cross-link semi-crystalline structure. So when heated, keratin in the feathers opens up these hollow tubes, which absorb some gases even better than the world-famous carbon nanotubes or metal hybrids. So if carbonized, chicken feathers should be able to store hydrogen, which is an amazing fuel, but was too expensive to store up until now. Now, knowing that Bosnia and Herzegovina alone has 10,000 kilograms, USA has 4 billion pounds of waste chicken feathers annually that just lay on the garbage fields because we obviously do not have enough pillows to stuff them. <laughs> 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 yeah, we decided to design a two reactor system for production of biodiesel and hydrogen storage material from chicken feathers, and we called it. Now get this, catch, catch it on, on the, the wing. wing. <laughs> <laughs> we would be able to achieve four aims with this system. First one, naturally, because we are coming from Bosnia, would be cost effectivity. The second aim needs to be energy efficiency. Third one, non-pollution. And the fourth aim is good quality of our products. So we had this brilliant idea, but we had to test everything. And this is when reality struck us. Not many people in Bosnia thought the two young girls can know much about this topic. So after many rejections, after many lights turned off, two professors from University of Tuzla decided to supervise our work and give us a laboratory to work in. <laughs> <laughs> so and we gathered our feathers from factories, and we even engaged my grandma into this project as she brought us some feathers from a nerby farm and then we kept them on our sofas. And that, yes, if you're asking, our parents actually put up with those unpleasant others. Thank you, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> and since we love designing, we decided to build this two reactor system, which would produce both products by using the same process energy. After two years of hard work and hours and, oh, hours spent in the laboratory, we finally finished our system, which fulfilled the four aims. First, the system was cost efficient due to the cheap materials and process used. But the second aim was a bit harder. Now, how to achieve energy efficiency by using the same process energy for production of biodiesel and hydrogen storage material? So you start a fire for a couple of minutes in the hydrogen storage material, and the heat will spread to high temperatures due to the interior of the system. 
Then these check chicken feathers would start to release some volatile hot rich gases which would want to go out of the chimney. But that would mean losing energy and we certainly don't want that. So this is where our love for music steps in as well. As we have been friends for such a long time and spent so much time together, once we sat in front of the TV and watched a show about airplanes and their afterburner chambers for restoring energy. Now those chambers were truly amazing idea, but they were too expensive and far too complicated, so we forgot about that. Later that day, we played the flute and the piano together. <laughs> And at one moment, I put my flute down, and I noticed how my flute has an amazing airflow. And I thought, wow. So then I discussed with Ilda, what if we put a structure like this above the main reactor? Will it actually restore the energy? And that worked. Each time the gases wanted to go out of the chimney, they bumped into this flute-like structure after burner chamber, and they had to circle back. The small amount of gases that had to go out because nothing in the nature is 100% be used for production of biodiesel as well. N now, moving <laughs> now moving on to the next biodiesel reactor. The gases from the hydrogen storage reactor were mostly at 50 degrees Celsius, which is a perfect temperature for production of biodiesel. We prevented the gases from the hydrogen storage reactor from coming into the biodiesel reactor, since that would interfere with the transesterification reaction by creating a double layer structure so that the gases from the hydrogen storage reactor would just circle around the biodiesel. Instead of using conventional pumps for agitation, we used, believe it or not, a simple kitchen mixer which uses just half of a horsepower. And we prevented the glycerin and biodiesel mixing with each other by designing a well-measured cone structure. So this, guys, is how we solve the energy efficiency problem. <laughs> so the third aim, or non-pollution, was actually achieved through the previous one. Each time these volatile hot rich gases wanted to go out of the chimney, they bumped into the afterburner chamber, so they couldn't. The only gases that had to go out were water vapor and carbon dioxide. And we solved the carbon dioxide problem by using a simple carbon filter. The quality of our biodiesel and hydrogen storage materials were tested by us and compared to samples from other al al already existing systems. They have proven to be much better quality. So this is it. We met our goals. Now, after finishing our project, we wanted to get more people to know about it and hopefully support our work. I'm so happy to say that we were fortunate enough that Google Science Fair has chosen us to be amongst 20 global finalists. Now, coming from such a small country and having all these troubles, just to be given an opportunity to invent and to show it to the world, that was the best opportunity we could have been ever given. From music to science. From a flute to an afterburner chamber. <laughs> from girls that ask way too many questions. To designing a two-reactor system. Everything started from wondering. And friendship and never giving up. So if and I... So if an idea, if a wonder, if energy can be caught, then why not catch, catch it on, on the wing? wing. <laughs>